Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Let's see who he's in the house. Jess is here. Jax is here. Michelle, Jane, Vera, Sandra's here. Alison's here. Jane's here. Mel's here. Margaret, good day. Julie, Vera, Sharon's here. Hi, everybody. Chakra day. Chakra, chakra. So we're talking about the chakras. If you are watching this on a rerun, we are talking about a product in specific uh, entirety, which is the Advent Calendar 2020. Um, if you don't have it, don't worry. You can switch over the stones, whatever gemstones you have. If you do have it, though, this is what we're here for today. Myra's here. Good day. Jelly Louis. Uh, jelly? Jelly? <laughs> Sorry, Kelly. Kelly, Louise is here, Sandra's here, Claire, Nima's here. Hi. Peace and love. Okay. So, yes, your box of goodies. So the first thing you'll probably find is that day one was the uh, plate, the glass plate. Um, everyone's probably opened theirs by now. I hope so. Although it's not really a Christmas advent, you can use it any time throughout the year it's really a chakra program so sorry kelly I, I yeah couldn't get your name out there for a minute <laughs> so i have actually i have actually not got one of the 2020 ones um they were so scarce uh that i've only got the um the prototypes i'm not going to show you those because they don't look anything like the, the finished product maria's here michelle's here eleanor's here nado's here Count down the new year. Yeah. So Advent really, I mean, it, it, it really is any any time really. Chakra is any time. It's uh, not just not just for Christmas time. <laughs> Major of the half laugh. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> it's all about laughter. Okay, so there's 12 doors uh, in that Advent. Of course, um, I think one of them is the the pouch bag and the idea is that when you have opened all your stones keep all your stones in that bag to keep them uh nice and clean and dust free so that's what that bag's for so that's that's self-explanatory good morning necessaries here like pets yeah so the glass plate is large enough to hold all your sphere stones. So seven major chakras, that's what we'll be talking about. And that glass plate is ready for you to hold all your stones. Now, the question was in the show when I launched it, can I work on all my chakras at the same time? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, you can. But if you wanted to work on one specific chakra at a time, I would be using that glass plate and placing the stone that you're working on in the center groove. So you've probably noticed on your plate, there's uh, little grooves. Now, you'll see the symbol on there, it's uh, a star. So that is actually representing uh, the Merkaba star. So we haven't really done anything much on the Merkaba. We will talk about that in, a, in another session. But all I really need you to, to, to know is that it's, it's an incredible, powerful symbol. So it's a geometrical symbol. And the idea is that the Merkaba star is what connects our body and our spirit with light. Um, you've probably seen those images um, from years ago and you'll see the geometric shapes and the guy, you know, the naked guy with his hands and arms out. So the idea is that everything in nature, everything in nature is a, a format, if you like, of duality. So we're talking about opposing forces coming together, the masculine, the feminine, light, dark. And the idea of the, uh, the ge geometric shape of the Merkaba is that it brings all of that together. I'm trying to give it in the most simple form. And the idea is that through meditation, we can actually connect to the fifth dimension by taking ourselves into, um, in, into that realm, if you like, by working with the Merkaba star. Now, of course, on that plate, it's in a, a 2D format, but I want you to imagine the Merkaba is actually a 3D shape. And 
imagine it outside of our body. So we have those, it's like the Star of David uh, into mingled together. So you've got that to make it into a 3D form. And imagine that being extended, um, uh, you know, around us like an aura. See it like an aura um, outside of our physical self, above, below, front and behind. And you're the one that's actually inside that Merkaba. So the idea was is to create that plate uh, just to introduce you to that and put the gemstones that you're working on onto that plate but in specific order so the idea is that we will work through our seven chakras and we will do a quick chakra tune-up uh, at the end of this session today so you'll be working with all your seven chakras and put them on that plate now when you are ready and you want to do a quick chakra tune-up maybe put them all on that plate um, I'll show you how to use a pendulum as well. So which one would you put in the center? I would put the one in the center that you want to work on mostly. Is my mic on? Yeah. Merkaba, yeah. That's correct, yeah. M-E-R-K-A-B-A-R. -A -A now what that actually means, M-E-R means light, K-A means spirit, and BA is body. So it's light, spirit, body, and it's connecting all that together. So just, just see it like that. It's um, it's a it's a geometric shape. But the takeaway from this today, it's a geometric shape that when you meditate, uh, we can take ourselves into that Merkaba star. We can close our eyes and we can visualize it uh, all around our body and we are inside that star. And we're actually going to be drawing light of the divine that connects our spirit to our body. So that, in a nutshell, that's that's what it means. We can dive into that uh, in depth later in the year, which I think will be a good idea. But I just thought, wouldn't it be great that not only you can put your stones somewhere on, on like an altar, if you like, while you're working with them, but put them onto a shape that actually means something. So that, that's what that means. So that's the plate, and that would have been day one. Then I believe day two through day eight, uh, I'm not sure that these were, these were boxed a long time ago now, are your orbs your chakra orb. So each one, of course, will specify the different chakras. So the root chakra, yeah, you can, Nado. Uh, the one from 2019, I can't remember what was in that one. That's such a long time. But absolutely, yeah, you can use any stones. Look, if you've got any stones from any of the candles, um, pop those stones on as well. Um, I can't even remember half of what these are from, but any, any of the stones... Um, you can use them with your chakras. I selected the ones that I really wanted you guys to work on for that set. So the first one, uh, of course, is the root chakra, and that's the red one. Um, so that was the red jasper. Uh, red jasper, great stone for grounding and safety and protection. So that's what, uh, that's what I've used in the set for that one. Then carnelian, so that's the orange stone, is the one that we're going to be working on, our sacral chakra, which is all about our um, creativity center, our sexuality center. Uh, more importantly for me, I, I really love working on this chakra because this is all about your uh, allowing yourself to feel joy. And I think especially what's going on in the world right now, you know, there's a lot of guilty feelings, I think, because the world is in such a turmoil um, I spoke to a lot of people about this recently and it's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm actually feeling good today and they feel guilty that they're feeling good because the rest of the world is feeling really cruddy. Uh, and this is what we need to understand is that, you know, the essence of us feeling really good, we can spread that to the rest of the world. And, and, and that's what I really want to, to get across with the sacral chakra, uh, standing in your power and feeling good. We are meant to feel good every single day that's our divine right to do that so that's the the sacral that's carnelian and that's the orange one now before i actually go on to the other five how do you use them well you can hold them in your hand i quite like to do that or you can hold them on the plate put them on the plate so if you are someone that likes to sit cross-legged uh, you can have the plate in front of you Pop the stone that you're working on in the center of those indentations on the plate 
and maybe have a candle burning next to it and then go into your meditation that way. Or just have the plate out there on the altar maybe throughout the day. So if you are working on your root chakra, do your root chakra meditation in the morning and maybe then have your stone out on your altar, out on your plate and have it there all day long. And then you could, of course, hold the gemstone in your hand. Um, I love to do that. I love to feel the, the power and energy of the gemstones. If you remember, some, some of the stones and some of the candles are flat. And these ones were specifically designed to place on the specific chakras. These ones, the orbs, are designed to hold in your hand. So if you want to hold them in your right hand, uh, the receiving hand, uh, that's what I, I would uh, love you to do. That's what they have been designed to do, to, to hold them. Physically feel that gemstone energy in your hand. So if you're working on all seven chakras, um, how could you do that? Could you put them all in your hands? Absolutely, maybe have them all in one hand together and hold them that way. Or of course you can put them in the little pouch and then just hold the bag of stones. Will it work through the material? Absolutely, yes. So either way, you, and the idea is that when you work with gemstones, a lot of this of course is intuition based. What works for you might not work for someone else. What works for me might not uh, be as powerful for someone else. So you've got to do what you feels right. Do you hold them singularly? Do you hold the bag? Do you have them in your altar in front of you? Do you have them all, uh, you know, placed in front of you with a candle? Whatever feels good for you guys uh, is the right way. Of course, there's no right or wrong way when we're working with energies. Energies are there. They're going to be working for you. It's just how you open yourselves up to that and how you can tap into those and bring those energies intuitively into your body. All right, so that's how to use them. That's how to hold them if you wish and how to place them. The third one is yellow jade. Now, I normally use tiger's eye. I love using tiger's eye for the solar plexus. Um, but if you watch me on, on Gems TV, I've been uh, sourcing a lot of yellow jade recently, um, which is unheard of absolutely unheard of because uh, to get hold of genuine yellow jade is quite difficult. Uh, but I did, as you know, last year. So I wanted to use as much as, it, as I can. Yellow jade, a uh, beautiful gemstone as well, of course, for the solar plexus. Any yellow gemstones for the solar plexus will work for you. Yellow jade is a very much um, an auspicious stone as well in China. Uh, jade is very auspicious very much believed to bring um, abundance. And that's what our solar plexus centers about. It's all about abundance of self. It's about abundance of power. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be beautiful to have that gorgeous yellow orb um, as our powerhouse, our power center? So that's the, that's the yellow jade working with the solar plexus. Heart, which one did I use for the heart? Uh, green adventuring. Lots of times I use uh, rose quartz, as you know. I thought that I know most of you have so much rose quartz probably in your houses right now. Let's, um, let's add some green aventurine. Now, green aventurine, as well as working with the heart chakra, I love this gemstone for deeper healing work of the heart of the inner child. Now, you've probably heard me speak about this before. I would love to very, very soon actually do um, an inner child meditation. Uh, I think it's something that most people don't realize that we hold on to so much from our childhood um, and our inner child gets wounded. And we do carry that through to our adult years. Now, the inner child does sit in the root chakra as well but she sits in the heart, he or she sits in the heart. So green aventurine, beautiful gemstone uh, to heal that inner child. What does it do? It connects ourselves back to that, um, that time in our life where, you know, when, when you watch a, a, a kid and they're jumping in puddles and they don't care, you know, they don't care, they, they, just, they just say things, they don't, 
you know, they don't think. And, and, it's, and it's taken us back to that point where I guess freedom is where I'm going with that, where we're free. As we grow up, you know, we can't say this, we can't do this, we can't, can't be seen to have fun, you can't walk in a puddle. It, you know, you know, people are going to look at me and we're too concerned with what everyone else thinks. You don't have the yellow orb. What do you have? What do you guys have? Do you guys have tiger's eye? What orbs do you have, guys? If you don't have the yellow one... It's a good idea, Julie. Use your gemstone pen to make notes. I'm just trying to work out what, what orbs. Yellow jade, yellow jade. Ah, number six. Okay. So you should have the red one. Good. Oh, thank goodness. I started to have a bit of a panic. Um, you should have the red one, the orange one, the yellow one, the green one. And now the blue one is the lapis lazuli, which is for the throat chakra, uh, all about communication, open communication and expression of self. So that's the gemstone to use uh, for the expression of self. We will uh, be revisiting our chakras again and we'll go back to the very beginning and, and, and do a chakra. Uh, we'll probably do a, a chakra a day again. We'll probably do that very soon. We'll do like an intensive, intensive chakra per day program. Um, so lapis is the one which is all about the throat chakra. It's all about expression of self, not just um, communication verbally, which everyone thinks it's communication uh, in its entirety. How do we communicate? Uh, not We don't, of course, not just communicate verbally we communicate energetically as well and we want to make sure that we open up those lines of communication good you've all got it oh thank the lord okay that's lapis uh, amethyst now you probably notice sometimes i do switch these around in my candles sometimes it's got amethyst sometimes it's got clear quartz sometimes it's got white jade when we start to work with the third eye and the higher chakras the crown chakra you can intermingle all these colors white purples, violets, dark blues, you know, the red, the red chakra, pretty much anything red you can use for the root. The orange chakra, the sacral, pretty much any orange or yellow, you can again intermingle those ones. Solar plexus, again, yes, yellow, browns, uh, you can use those. Heart chakra really is the pink stones and uh, green stones. Although I do quite use like using um, ruby, ruby is a good, a good one, but very expensive. Uh, get yourself a big chunk of ruby. Oof, how good would that be? But we can visualize, visualize ruby for the heart. Blue stones, of course, for the throat, pale blues, uh, Laramar, great gemstones, sodalite, uh, lapis, as we know. Um, angelite's a beautiful one. I do like to use angel light, as you know, to connecting to angels. So really the third eye and crown, uh, I like to hold on to angel light for, for that purpose. So amethyst I have put in there and clear quartz. So it's up to you. Do you want to use amethyst for your third eye? Do you want to use amethyst for the crown? It's up to you. You can interchange those two. Next advent calendar, Ruby. Could you imagine how expensive, could you imagine the size of that orb you've got, guys, in ruby? I'd be frightened. I'd be frightened at the cost. I think it would be <laughs> triple, oh, gosh, no, four figures. Be a four-figure sum advent calendar. Goodness me, that'd be crazy. So those are your seven orbs. Now, the next, the next one you've probably found, a pointer. Could you imagine? So you've got your pointer stone. Now, I don't know whether you guys have got any of these previously. Um, I've been talking to Gems TV because um, I don't know how you, whether you know how it works with Gems and myself. So I, I design for them 
Um, so I don't, I'm, I'm still within their constraints, if you like, of what I can and cannot do. Take that how it resonates. Um, so there's a lot of product that I would love to bring on air. Um, and, and these were one of them. Um, and the only way I could get them through was to pop one in an advent last year. I'm, I'm, look, I'm going to work on work on talking to them about because really you need. I like to have six of these um, to charge and program my stones. We can we can use one to do it because otherwise I wouldn't have put one in. But the idea is that I like to use this as a uh, specific pointing of energy to my stones now if you are um, a, a reiki healer as well and you have clients um, popping these under your um, table your massage table I always um, like to do that I don't I don't have clients coming to the house um, the way that I do my reiki healing now is by uh, distance so people would contact me for a healing and I would do it uh, remotely. That's what I'm after, remotely. But use these for charging and empowering your stones. So what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, with all your gemstones, hopefully you do wash them. So the very first thing to do is to cleanse your stones. Yeah, a bit like gem collector, but don't forget... Um, for me, it's all about healing and the metaphysical side rather than, as you know, Gems TV is more mainstream and um, they don't tend to talk too much about the metaphysical side. There's a lot of constraints, I guess you could say, on, on TV where there are certain things we, we can and cannot say. Yeah, six pointers, but they were small. They were really, really small. That's how I got away with, with those. But I'm talking about these really, really, these big ones. They're, um, they're not cheap. They're not cheap to produce. Um, well, for two reasons. One, the, the sheer size, um, but also j just the way that they're, they're carved uh, and the pointers on them as well. They're just, they're, they're quite expensive to, to get hold of them. Um, I will really, I will really talk to them about it. Because um, it, it, it won't be a cheap exercise, that's all I'm saying. The small ones, absolutely, uh, yes. So how would you use them? If you have got the small ones, then great. Uh, you're, um, you're a step ahead. I would have them in a six point. So you have one at the top of your gemstone, one at the bottom, and then two either side like that. So imagine head, uh, trunk, and then at this side, wings out here and wings out the bottom. So you've got six points pointing into your gemstone. So I would lie them on the floor, um, have your Merkaba style plate, have your gemstone in the middle to charge, and then have your six pointers. So if you have got those ones from last time, uh, use those. If you haven't and you've got this one, I would pop this on the, um, the plate as well. So the idea is that you're drawing in the divine light in through the pointer uh, into the clear quartz. I would let it sit like that for a day or so. And I would also write an intention. So I would have a piece of paper and I would write my intention, what you're charging that gemstone for. So root chakra, what, what is it that you want from the root? Do you want to feel safe every day? Do you want to feel secure? Do you want to feel that you've got... Um, you know, enough money every day that you never feel lackful. So think about what it is that you're programming that your particular orb with, write it on a piece of paper. And then I like to slide that, uh, you know, underneath your plate. Um, and then once you've done that and you've programmed it into your pointer, I like to use these on top of the stone. Imagine that's your orb. I like to just sit there and it's almost like, oh, I don't, did you see that then? Did you just see? I don't think you saw that. 
it, that gemstone just moved on its own. Do you say before, could you use clear quartz angel? Yeah, um, clear quartz angel, charge that too. A uh, different feel because, of course, then you're invoking your angel. So that'd be really, really powerful as well. The idea is that the pointer is like literally directing that energy point. I mean, angels, we don't have any sharp sharp points with the angel. That'd be a different um, feeling. But the, the point, I don't know whether you just saw that, that just moved on my hand. So I would hold this, I'd have the orb, and I would literally be telling the orb that I'm sending that energy that I've just created inside my point, and I'll be directing it straight into that orb, your intentions, straight into the orb. That's how I would use a single pointer. Have the six that you have, maybe. If you've already got six, then great. But if you've only got the one, that's how, how I would be doing it. Don't forget all the gemstones. You really do need to be charging these under the moonlight as well. So every single full moon now, guys, I hope you are getting into the habit, taking all your stones. Um, even if you don't want to put them outside, you can put them on a window sill in the home where it gets flooded with the moonlight. Get into the habit of charging your stones. So you've cleansed them. You've charged them and programming them is what we're talking about now. So we, we're having that intention setting that we're programming our stones. I send it into a uh, ritual. I think what we probably should do, actually, why don't we do a session, a whole hour and a half session on cleansing, charging and programming? Should we do that? I think I think we can do that. We could probably do a whole session on, on how exactly to do it, the prayers to use, the invocations to use, the intention settings. Why don't we do that? I think we should do that. Uh, the angel was in that. Yeah, absolutely. The angel was in there to help you connect to the angels. Absolutely. Um, the point I had had the cleaning burner. Cleaning burner, what does that mean? Yeah, let's do that. So we'll do a whole session on that. So that's now you know why that was in there, and that's how I do it. If you've only got the one, I, I would be literally pointing it onto it and, and holding that. In, ah, I can actually feel it today. Huh. This, um, this, by the way, is Botswana agate, and it's an a energetic stone. Gives you wings. Oof. Gosh. Incense burner. No, no, I use different different prayers for different chakras, Sandra. So um, if you jump on our Facebook page, Gem Aura's Facebook page, the, if you scroll down, I think actually on the right-hand side, I think there's a 30-day program tab. And if you go on there, you should find all the affirmations and all the prayers for each of the seven uh, chakras. Uh, I will reload those up for you as well for the sage incense burner. Sage. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit lost. Eleanor, what do, what do you mean, darling? Yeah, your window ledge is always chock-a-block. Yeah, I like to put mine outside. I remember in the UK, though, I used to, I don't know if I told you this story. I, I, I've got thousands, as you can imagine, it, and it's like literally a two-hour job to get them all out there. Ah, Got some good news for you. Uh, I've just designed and developed uh, a beautiful tray. It's a gorgeous, I think it's made of walnut wood tray, and it's in the shape of a crescent moon. It's about this big. Uh, it's coming to Gems TV, I think, in June or July, so look out. And the idea is I've designed it so that it's a tray that you put your gemstones on and you carry them and you offer them to the moonlight. So you don't keep the tray out outside because it's wood. Um, but the idea it's like an offering to the moon and, and, and you carry them from your home uh, outside to the moon. You offer them on this beautiful plate. So that's coming. Ah, oh, the little cones. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about the cones as well because the cones, yes, you can use those to um, cleanse all your gemstones as well. Sage, yes, is a massive big uh, cleanser, massive big cleanser. 
Right, so we spoke about the pointer, how you can use it to, to charge uh, your stones. Uh, another good little tip that I love using um, these for um, is to hold them in your hand that way. So have the, have, the, have the pointer coming this way in your right hand because that's your receiving hand. And I like to do meditations when I'm asking for help and um, direct the energy into you that way. So that's another way you can use these, just in pure meditation with these on their own when you're asking the divine's help to bring whatever you want into your life. Is it clarity? Is it peace? Is it joy? Use these to do that. That's, that's another reason why I like to use these. Bracelet, of course, uh, goes without saying. They've got all the gemstones on there. And, yes, they are lava beads, by the way. People say, what are the black stones? Yes, they're lava beads. And the idea is that you can add some essential oils to those. So if you wanted to add a drop of lavender oil on there or rose or whatever oil that you like to use, you can add uh, that oil to the black beads, the lava beads. Yeah, it's a beautiful tray. It's um, made of walnut wood, and I think it's it. I think it's about yay big. We've we've just actually finished designing it, uh, me and my um, team last week, um, and it's yeah, oh, it's gorgeous. Can't wait because I did have a, a Buddha's hand like that in England, and um, I don't really know my brother's PA Barry. I left it on my desk in England. And he's like, oh, I'm going to have that. When I went back to England, not last Christmas, the Christmas before, I saw it on his desk. I'm like, you cheeky monkey. Um, but I forgot to bring it back with me. So Barry has got my Buddha's hands. And I used to use that to offer them uh, to the moon. Now I just use um, uh, a massive big box, but it's not, as, it's not as enjoyable. You need to make it a ritual. And that's why I say every full moon, you know, cross your diary off. You know, don't you're not going anywhere. Well, we're not going anywhere anyway at the moment, but make it a ritual. It's enjoyable time. Offer the stones to the moon. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait. Chakra oils, yeah. Roll your oils onto your lava stones and you can wear that chakra bracelet. So that's a bracelet. Let's come on to the exciting bit. Dun, dun, dun. Pendulum. We will probably do another whole session as well on pendulums. But how to use the pendulum for chakra. So you can program your pendulum to let you know which chakra you should be working on. It's great. Just tell me who uses pendulums now. Who who knows how to use a pendulum? Just let me know in the chat. I love these. I drop them a lot though, look. Just be careful with gemstones because if you drop these on the floor, I've got some a stone floor, uh, a tiled floor, got no carpet. It's too hot in Australia for carpet. So I'm forever dropping mine on the floor. And that they break, so be very careful. They're quite fragile. Not sure how to use them. That's okay. All right. So the stone that I um, added in your set for you is Pink Adventuring. I've never used Pink Adventuring before, ever. Mm. Yeah, and the 21-day program, there is a video on there. It's quite an old video. I think we might do one together. We'll do a live sesh. Okay. First and foremost, don't let anyone else touch it, okay? This is yours. If you've got other people in the family, um, you know, kids, grandkids that want to touch it, mm -mm, no, that's yours. This is your energy. This is you. If you've got people handling it, then it, it picks up other people's energies, okay? So that's the rule number one. This is yours. Um, don't let anyone else touch it. Oh, the one with all the chakra gem sounds awesome. Good. Pink Adventuring, I added that in. Um, and with hindsight now, I mean, that, that set was developed over a year ago before COVID. Oh, look, Pink Adventuring is such a great stone. Um, it, it's a stone um, to help us through adversity. 
um, if you like. It's a stone of, well, first of all, it's pink and it's nurturing, and I, I love that. Um, I love pink stones. I told, did I show you the other day this one? Rhodolite, someone bought me. Beautiful healing stone. So any pink stones are a very nurturing stone anyway in its nature. Pink adventurine uh, reminding us, um, you know, that we're okay through adversity and, and, and to hang in there basically. Um, so what a great stone to have. Oh, Kathleen, no worries. Uh, maybe watch the rerun. Welcome. We're just on to the pendulum. So first of all then, so number one, rule number one, this is yours. No one's to touch it. Uh, rule number two, you need to cleanse it. I don't want you to get it wet um, I, only because I don't want them um, to, to rust on the chains. So how do you cleanse these other than water? I would be using uh, incense cones um, and any incense cone. Sage is great if you've got a sage stick. Sandalwood's great. Um, and any, any cone will do. And uh, you want to cleanse them with the smoke. Um, you, you could hold on to it and, and just let it do its thing over the smoke. I like to set my cone burning and then drop this into a bowl and put the lid on and actually literally see all the smoke swirling around. Just be careful when you take the, the lid off or the saucer off and your smoke alarms. You might want to do it outside. Beautiful way to cleanse. If you've got Tibetan bells, music is a good cleanser. Um, you might want to cleanse your gemstones with Tibetan bell music. Uh, maybe jump on YouTube, get some beautiful um, music, play it really loud <laughs> and have your gemstones sitting there. Have we spoke about creating altars in your homes as well? Yeah, granddad's here. We probably should do a session on creating an altar because um, that's the space that you can go to and that's where you would be performing your cleansing of your stones. So cleanse, first of all. Well, first of all, it's yours only. Number two, get it cleansed. Number three, get it um, charged under the moonlight. If you haven't done that yet, that's okay. But every single moonlight, get these out. Get them out in the moonlight. Don't forget, if you are putting them outside, it does get a bit, little bit damp overnight. You might want to put them in a little Ziploc bag so they don't get wet, so the chain doesn't get wet. Glue gun. Ah, oh, you mean to... Um, do you know what? I did think about that, but it, does, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It still works. It still works. I did think about gluing it, but... Sometimes um, things that are, are, are broken, it, does it matter? They've still got the power. So that's it. I did think about that. I did think about that. All right. Then we're going to program it. So what do we want? What is our intention with the pendulum? The pendulum, uh, our intention is that we connect to our higher self. And that's the idea is that we ask questions through our higher self and we are programming the pendulum to give us the answer. Now, don't become obsessed with pendulums. Sometimes people come obsessed with pendulums every single day, you know, using it every day. You know, I don't know. I'm trying to give you an example. You know, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? So just, just be mindful of that, that, of course, we are tapping into our higher energies. So if your higher energies, um, if we're not connected how shall I say it? If you are not vibing right in the first place, don't forget we are connecting to that vibe. We've got to make sure that we are in the right space um, to be using these in the first place. Let's just say it like that. So would you be programming these and charging these if, you, if you're in a bit of an antsy mood? No. I would make sure that you do it when you feel rested, you feel calm, you've had a good night's sleep. Um, and, and you're feeling that energy, that's the, time to, that's the time to do it. So the idea is that you're connecting with your higher self. We are going to be asking um, the pendulum to 
resonate with us and to answer certain questions. Of course, we it's not going to talk back to you, so you have to word questions in a certain way, um, yes and no answers. So, well, first of all, you want to know what does yes look like? And you want to know what does no look like? So that's the first thing you need to do is to, is to ask your pendulum, what does yes and what does no look like? Okay. Now, if you've never used one before, it might be a good idea, actually, three, three nights prior to working with it, pop it under your pillow so it, it can attune to you. So if you've never worked with one before, if you've got a brand new one, so like as I said before, I constantly buy some. Um, I lose them all the time. <laughs> I drop them. So I'm buying them quite extensively from our crystal store around the corner. And I would have it under my pillow for three nights. You want to, you want to sleep with them and, and let them attune to you. Or ladies, if you uh, if who was it yesterday I said they didn't wear a bra? Sorry, that was hilarious. Um, pop it in your bra. Yeah. So it's close to your heart. You want to attune these so closely to your essence of you. Have them close to you. Or throughout the day, just keep, pick it, oops, keep picking it up. Play with it. Sit with it. Oh, absolutely. Moldavite. Woo. Wow. Meteorite material right there. Absolutely. Yes, Vivian. Yeah. Whatever hand you want. If you're right-handed, I use my right hand. If you're left-handed, use your left hand. Um, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to, Keller Louise. Yeah, again, it's another. I need to talk to the UK on what I am allowed to do. Last cup of coffee. Yeah, I'd like to. All right, so we've cleansed it, we've charged it, we've programmed it in the sense of it's my intention that when I ask questions, uh, the questions are from the divine for my highest good. It's for my highest good. Yeah, of course, in life, you want everything to be for your highest good and, and someone else's. You know, when we manifest things, we want to make sure that it's coming under grace and in perfect ways. It's the same with a pendulum. So to start off easy, you want to know what does yes look like. Now, there's certain ways that you can get an answer. So to hold the pendulum, I don't, I don't hold it on its end. You know, there's a little ball at the top. Um, some of them have balls on the top. I'm not sure if the one that um, I made for you guys. It doesn't really need to because that's... For me, that's too long. I like to have it about, what's that, about four inches. And you can just pop it over your finger like that, or you can just hold. I like to just hold on to it like that. Okay. You need to make sure that your arm is supported. So I wouldn't be doing this. I would, oops, have it on a table. I don't know you can see now. I would have it on a table with your elbow supported and just let it move. Ah, yeah, Jax, I like it. I like your thoughts. Right, pretend that this is supported on a table because you can't see the camera. All right. And we want to ask the pendulum, what does yes look like? So the pendulum could swing forwards and backwards. It could swing in a circular motion. It could be clockwise. It could be anti-clockwise. Yours is going to be different. Yeah, yours will be, is going to be different. Or it might be the same as mine. So please show me what does yes look like. Please show me what does yes look like. See, I know that my yes is a circle and mine's anti-clockwise. That's what my yes is. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not moving it. Please show me what does no look like? So my no is front and back, front and back. It could be the other way. So yours could be, yes, could be a circle that way. 
and a no could be a circle that way. So mine is a circle to the left is a yes, and my no is front and back, front and back. So play with it. Play with it because at first, of course, you need to know what yours is before you even begin to ask it questions. So have a little play with it. Ask it, what does yes look like? What does no look like? There is another way that you can um, do it as well, is that you can have a piece of paper and you can write the word yes on the left-hand side and you can write the word no um, on the other side and then hold it over each of them. And then when you read the word and say, yes, what does yes look like? That's just another way of affirming. It's the same thing, but without the written words. Okay. So you know what yes looks like, you know what no looks like. When we're working with our chakras, uh, when I do um, chakra healings on um, clients, uh, well, last year when we, when we had clients that could come and we could do it, I would use pendulums as well um, to ask the chakras, are they open, are they closed? So we can do that, but we can do that on ourselves. Of course, it's very difficult to lie down and, and put, put the pendulum over each of the chakras on yourself. Of course, you can do it to your family. Uh, if you wanted to give this a little go, you could um, ask the chakras on your family members which one's open, which one's closed. Have a little play of that. A little bit more difficult to do it for yourself. I will teach you another way of doing it uh, on your palm because on certain points relates to certain chakras. But the most simple way, the most simple way to do it is to get a piece of paper and I would write all the chakras in order. So your root, your sacral, your solar plexus. I would write all those words down on a piece of paper. To the left of the word, I would put uh, closed. To the right, I would put open. And then I would just sit in quiet meditation and I would ask, root chakra, are you open? Or are you closed? And then you would hold the pendulum over the word open. Now, of course, you need to know which is your yes and which is your no. So let's say my root chakra, I've got the word open. And it does this. I know that yes, yes, it's open. I would then do it over the closed. And I would imagine that it would say, no, it's not closed. So that's a way that you can, you can do it on yourself, on a piece of paper, open, closed. Or you could use the words balanced, which is a better way, unbalanced, balanced, unbalanced. So you'll know which one you're going to be working on at a specific time. So it's an incredible, incredible way of doing it. So, but don't rush this, guys. Yeah, don't, don't, don't rush these takes time. So let's recap. Never let anyone else touch it. Cleanse it, charge it, program it. Sleep with it for a few days. Ask what your questions are. What does yes look like? What does no look like? And then start to use it. Great way. Great way of working with the chakras. Is my root chakra balanced today? Or questions like, do I need, do, do I need to work on my root chakra today? Yes, no. Is my heart chakra needing work today? Yes, no. Beautiful thing. No, I mean, once you've programmed it, that's it really. It's the cleansing and the charging. Once you've programmed it, once you've programmed it, that's you, you've programmed it. So you don't, it's not something you have to keep doing all the time. Keep cleansing all the time, absolutely. And if you are a, a Reiki healer as well um, and you use gemstones, a crystal healer, um, each client we would 
of course, cleanse and charge after. Goes without, goes without saying. That's why you never let anyone touch your crystals, really. Never let anyone else touch them. And if they do, just when they've left, just, <laughs> just go and cleanse them and charge them again. Do you have to ask every time you use it? Yeah, I mean, question, questions that you might want to um, ask. Um, don't forget, you're, you're asking your intuition. Let's just give you an example. Let's just say you've got a friend um, that you're just not sure what their intentions are. You know, you've got a sneaky feeling that they've asked you to do something that just doesn't sit right and you're not sure what their intentions are. I've just pulled that out the top of my head. So you would maybe say, oh, whatever their person's name is, is X person, are their intentions pure towards me? Yes or no? Yes, no. But it's, it's something that we're, uh, don't forget, um, divinely guided and, and in tune to. Yeah. Or maybe you've got a choice to make. You know, um, again, just, just be very, very careful with it. Um, let's just say you've got an opportunity to, I don't know, move house and you, you're undecided which one's, which one's best for you. Let's just, let's just say. You could ask that. House A, apartment A, would this be suited for my highest good? Yes, no. And don't forget, it's your intuition that's giving you the answers. Questions like that. Different pendulums have different responses. Well, they shouldn't do. Do you mean by that, Michelle, if you've got two pendulums and you ask it the same question? Is that what you mean? If you've got two pendulums and you've asked it the same question, it, you should be getting the same result. Uh, cleansing, yes, Nado. So um, water, but of course, like we said, we don't really want to be using water on these only only because of the um, the metal on them. I don't want them to go rusty. Um, music, 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 music. Play some beautiful music. Reiki healing music. Go onto YouTube. Any sort of healing uh, music would be lovely. Tibetan bells. Uh, I've got some bells. I don't know where they are. Somewhere. They were on my desk. Let's show you. Oh, they're gone. Tibetan bells. Tibetan bells. Sage. You can use your sage. You can burn the sage. You can cleanse them that way. Or like I say, like I, I like to do is to set it and then put a little plate over it. White sage, yeah. Sage is a great cleanser, everybody. You can also, uh, visualization cleansing is a good one. If, got, if you are someone that's got really, really good uh, visualize, visualization, white light cleansing. And again, put them on your, your offering of your plate put them on there and imagine the beautiful white light of the divine just washing, washing your gemstone. Don't forget um, intention setting and intention visualization is incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. You know, you can imagine a, a beautiful white shower light that's coming down onto your pendulum and cleanse it that way. Perfect, perfect way of cleansing too. So it doesn't have to just be water. Uh, sage, um, definitely sage. Cleansing houses, sage, get into all the corners. Um, I have my house feng shui actually every year. She's about due, a lovely lady called Perry. She comes over to my place and she feng shui's my house every year. Um, 
and we do this as well. Every single cupboard gets opened, every single drawer. Cleanse, a nice cleanse. Sage is a beautiful one. I need to do sage again in the candles. I think the only time I've used sage was the, do you remember the feng shui candle? I might have to bring those back because I adore that, adore that candle. I'll have to do that again. But that was sage. That was white sage. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So everyone okay with the, everyone okay with the pendulums? Have a, have a little play tomorrow if you're in the UK now because I know it's not tonight. Have a little play. See what yes and no is. Be patient. Be patient with it. Yeah, it did smell beautiful. Let's um, just wanted to pull a, an oracle of the chakras. We're all here together. We're going to go through a meditation in a minute. We're going to do a, a chakra tuner. I've got some music, which is two minutes per chakra. I thought that would be nice. All right. Let's, uh, let's see. So we've got um, quite a few people joining us at the moment. So we're going to be tuning into everyone's energies that's with the tribe today. Don't forget if you are watching this on a rerun, do watch it with the chat. Don't forget to join us on Facebook, our beautiful tribe. We continue on there. Please don't forget to drop a like on this video. What does that mean? It means it does help me reach and grow the channel. I want to grow the channel um, as big as I can. And then I'm allowed to just put videos on over 15 minutes. Currently, I'm not allowed to do over 15 minutes unless we're live. So do please subscribe to the channel if you can. Drop a like every time you watch the video. If you could, that would help the channel. All right, we're asking the divine's help to tell us what, as a collective that are here today, that we need to need to hear for our chakras today. Ooh, jumper. I love chakra music. What do we need to hear? What do we need to hear? Throat chakra, everybody. We're talking about expression at the moment. This is a message that's just come through. Let's read this. The fifth chakra is the throat chakra, expressing my feelings. Yeah. I allow my emotions to be fully experienced. I acknowledge feelings of, oh, oh. I acknowledge feelings of anger, grief, fear, and I make a conscious effort to express my emotions or resolve them within myself so that I can move forward freely. I let the unconditional love experience in my heart be expressed through my voice and creativity. I let those close to me know how much I love and care for them. I forgive all those who have done me wrong in the past, as well as forgiving myself, as I could not have responded in a more evolved way than I was able to at the time. Expressing feelings. What a beautiful one at the moment with what's going on in the world right now. So not holding that in. It's a shit time. Excuse me. Um, express it. Yeah, express it. It's okay. Oh, Jess, guess what? Uh, yesterday, my uh, paint by numbers arrived. It's bigger than me. I'm five foot. It's bigger than me. I love it. Can't wait to get going. Give me another message, please, Spirit. Another message that the tribe need to hear today. Oh my God. Fifth chakra. You cannot write that. You cannot make this stuff up. Expression. Merde. Correct. I develop a quiet mind that allows me to tune in and get in touch with my higher self of all my spirit. I listen for the guidance that is there waiting for me to hear. Oh my gosh. I am open to the truth and I welcome spiritual inspiration from others. Holy dooly. I will benefit greatly by practicing meditation and stillness. I ask for inner guidance to assist me in getting more in touch with my spirit 
I know that if I ask for guidance, it will be given. You cannot make this stuff up. Spirit wants us to express, connect. Isn't that what we're doing right now? Amen. Um, these are, um, I have to tell you, these were from uh, a shop in Australia. Um, they're, they're, they're not that well made. They're quite... They're quite bendy. I don't know whether you can buy them. Um, let's have a look in England. It's just called the power of chakras. I am going to write my own. I am going to develop my own because I really want to um, encapsulate different modalities all together. Let's have a message from the angels. Let's have a message from the angels, shall we? Actually, no, let's, um, let's pull from the oracle, the oracle deck, and then we'll go into our meditation. Um, so this is another chakra one. I love this. These cards are beautiful. This is a gorgeous deck, and they feel so nice too. Oh, these are really nice quality. Yes, I will. Did I put them away? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll refine them and I'll put them on the group. So join the group if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to drop a like on the video, please. Help us grow this channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Okay. Oracle, deck of chakras, spirit guides, please. What do we need to hear today as a collective group? What do we need to hear today, please? Roots of abundance. Number two, root chakra. Let's have another one. Let's pull another one. Root chakra. Yeah, it's um, necessary. Yeah, I can't wait to design and let they take a long time. I got a kind of a good idea what I want to do. Okay. Give us a message that we need to hear, please. The roses kiss. Oh, that's beautiful. Sacral chakra. Beautiful. Number two. Let's just read this. Roots of abundance. This is what we got. First of all, being stabilized by deep roots, anchoring yourself and feeling secure in life, trust and believe in abundance. That's beautiful. The message here is simple. Your life is safe and secure and your intentions are coming to fruition. All your hopes and dreams are firmly grounded and taking root so that you can reach for the stars of your life and expand your dreams further than you can imagine. I like that. Number nine, the roses kiss. Beautiful. Take a deep breath and center on feeling joy. Can you allow your senses to awaken and connect with your innate desire to experience all life has to offer? Pleasure is part of life. Isn't that what we were saying earlier? Pleasure is part of life. Let yourself surrender to it today. And that's what we were saying earlier, irrespective of what's happening in the world right now. You know, to feel joy, we, we want to feel joy every day. And not to feel guilty that we're feeling joy when, you know, the world's in turmoil. That's what's going to turn the world around is to, to allow ourselves to feel joy, irrespective of what's going on around us. Yeah, it is perfect. Okay, let's, let's do this. I've got a, a quick chakra uh, tune up. We'll go into our tribe prayer first. And then what we'll do, we'll go into a beautiful... Uh, meditation it's just a it's just a short one probably 20 minutes uh which is which is long enough really and we'll open our chakras we'll get them spinning we'll connect together in divine love and um that'd be beautiful beautiful thing to do maybe next week what should we do next week do we want to do we want to do a session on cleansing charging programming maybe we can do that next sunday 
that'd be a nice thing to do. And then we'll probably head into a um, a nice session on every single chakra again. Let's let's do that as well. All right. Ooh, wherever you may be in your room, if you want to lie down now, close your eyes, or if you are seated. Back nice and straight. Don't forget there's no right and wrong way in meditation. It's um, A lot of people do give up with meditation because they feel they can't stop their mind from thinking. It does take time. No right and wrong way. Even if you can switch off for one moment, it's worth the effort. If any thoughts come into your mind, just acknowledge them and let them go. It's okay. Let's get the music ready to go so that I'm not fiddling around. Okay, we're good. So when we, the idea of meditation is to take ourselves into what we call a theta brainwave. So under theta, we are talking to the subconscious mind. How do we do that? We take ourselves from the conscious mind. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we breathe. So when you're nice and comfortable, either seated or lying down, we're going to take three nice big breaths. Now when you breathe, I want you to imagine that you are drawing the breath from your perineum, so the root chakra at the base of the spine, and like liquid through a straw. I want you to imagine drawing that breath all the way up through the spine. And I want you to imagine that it goes through each of the chakras. Then it comes out the top of the head. When we get to the top of the head, we're going to hold it for a moment. Now, we don't hold it so that you're going blue in the face. We want to practice holding that breath. And we let go. Now, when you breathe out, I really want you to get into the habit of adding a sigh. So it's literally, as you breathe out, you are, <sighs> just let it go. It's like a, how can I say, energy dump. Yeah, it's like a, <sighs> my mum was always sighing. <laughs> All the time, which is a different situation to this, but it makes me smile. So the idea is that we breathe in, we breathe life through all our chakras, we take it to the top of the head with the intention of pulling the mind out of the body. And then when we exhale, we dump it all out. Yeah. Let's do that now. Let's take three big breaths. So inhale. So imagine that liquid from a straw, pull it up through the perineum all the way up through each of the chakras, the sacral, the solar, heart, up through the throat, third eye, top of the head, can you hold? Now let go. When you let go as well, I like to... Let my body respond as well. So what I mean by that is let your shoulders drop. Just feel yourself just sinking through the floor. So you're releasing all tension in your muscles as well. Let's do that again. A nice big deep breath in. So in we go up. Pull it up. Keep pulling. Locking through each of the chakras. Up we go. 
Hold at the top of the head. Now let go with a sigh. It feels so good to do that. If at any time during the day that you need that as well, just take yourself off and do that. Three breaths. Last one now, let's inhale, take that breath in. Up through the perineum, the root chakra, sacral. Solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye. Up, squeeze, top of the head. Hold. Let go. Beautiful. And to imagine now that beautiful space there you go to, maybe you are sat underneath our tree that we visit. Maybe you're sat on a beach. Maybe you're swinging in a hammock. Maybe you're in a beach shack where it's raining, rainforest. Wherever you may be that you go to, that's your quiet space. The idea is to disconnect. The place we go to where all is calm. where we feel that full relief, nothing to do, nowhere to go. I want you now to imagine that you are drawing the energies from your earth star chakra, which is beneath your body in the earth, six, 12 inches below. I want you to imagine that a glowing dark red, black colour maybe, whatever dark colour you visualise, energy of the earth. I want you to draw it in now up through your root chakra. Let's start to open the chakras. The root chakra first. Root chakra is a red color I want you to imagine a dark red color that's coming up through your earth star now turn it into a bright red color at the base of your spine spinning at a speed that is right for you this chakra gives us feelings of security of safety and belonging. I want you to breathe that red color into every cell of your body right now. <sighs> Beautiful. I just want you to see in your mind's eye that chakra spinning now, clear, unblocked. Feeling in touch with the planet, with the earth, grounded, safe, secure. Again, washing every cell of your body with that beautiful red energy. Let every cell of your body dance with that color purifying the blood and to draw that energy up now into the next chakra the orange one the sacral chakra located below the belly button beautiful orange light this is our emotional center known as the water chakra. 
Savistana. This chakra is responsible for our emotions, uh, allowing ourselves to feel pleasure. I want you now to see that chakra spinning this beautiful orange color at a speed that is right for you. Now with your next breath, I want you to send that healing light all the way through your body to every cell of your body. Let those cells bathe in this orange light. Giving yourselves permission to feel pleasure and joy. See the energy coming up through the earth star chakra, up through your root. Feel the connection of all these three chakras together. I want to now draw that energy up now into your heart space. Now just below the heart is your solar plexus. Let's first fill that with beautiful yellow light. Energy of fire. This is your self power center. Willpower personal power. This chakra reminds us that we have the power to heal our bodies. This beautiful burning yellow ball of energy, I want you now to see it spinning this gorgeous yellow color. Imagine the sunlight shining directly onto that chakra. With your next breath, I want you to send this beautiful yellow energy through every cell of your body. Can you see this now connected to your lower chakras, your earth star, through the root, through the sacral, into the solar plexus, heart spaces above. This one is energizing chakras above and below. Now let's activate that heart space, this beautiful heart of yours. Glowing a gorgeous emerald color. Every beat of your heart. Feel it beating this beautiful emerald color. Color of compassion. Love of self. Love of family, friends, community, county, country, the world. Let's see that chakra now spinning at that perfect speed. It's clear, it's bright, it's shining. Now with that next breath, I want you to send that green energy through every cell of your body. (sighs) 
Let's go beyond that now, though. I want you to imagine that you are emulating a pebble that's being dropped in a lake and the ripples are traveling further and further away. That is you in your heart space sending this healing love to the rest of your family, your neighbors, your friends, your town, your country. Let's draw this healing energy now up into your throat chakra. Located at the throat, this is the one that allows us full expression of self. Imagine a beautiful blue color. This is the chakra that resonates with the element of air. I'm breathing in this beautiful blue light. Moonlight is a light that charges our throat chakra. Drink that silvery blue energy in right now. And chakra is spinning at a speed that is right for you. Now with your next breath, let's send that now to every cell of your body. Imagine the moonlight shining down on every cell illuminating and powerful nurturing energies of full expression. Beautiful. And let's draw that now up to the third eye chakra on the brow. Ajna. To softly focus now on your third eye area. Can you see anything? An eye, maybe, maybe purple light. This is your center of intuition. Drawing that energy now all the way up through your earth star, root chakra, solar plexus, heart, throat, all the way up to the third eye, coming through each of those lower chakras. Let's bless each cell of your body with intuition with the next breath. Send this to every single one. Bathed in a light of indigo color. Each cell of your body intuitively knows what to do. You just need to get our minds out of the way. Let's take that energy now up through the crown of the head. Visualizing a beautiful violet light. Mm. 
You see this chakra spinning at the crown of your head now. Your connection to the divine. This beautiful healing light. The crown chakra allows us connection to all that is. Now get ready, I really want you to send this healing light to every cell of your body, this violet light. Take that breath. Now, this is the next big breath. I want you to take it all the way now from your earth star up through your root chakra, your sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye, up through the crown. Now, let's explode it out the crown to a nothing space. Nothing. Soul star. Beautiful white light. Now I want you to imagine this beautiful white light. Peace. Silence. True connection. <sighs> Enjoy that moment. to the divine. <sighs> Beautiful. <sighs> Knowing that our chakras are now Aligned, balanced, connecting us through the earth star all the way up through the crown of the head, up through our soul star. Perfect as above, so below. I just want to take both hands now and place them over your heart space. Having compassion for yourself. Knowing these last 20 minutes have been giving back to yourself. And when you're ready, just start to move your fingers, maybe move your toes. Start to bring your awareness now back up into the room. Maybe moving your shoulders gently side to side, moving your neck. Bringing yourself now, your awareness now back up into the room. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. How's everybody? Everybody okay? Beautiful. So we went through each of the chakras. We concentrated only two minutes per chakra, bringing in the earth star and, of course, the soul star as well. Big hugs. Awesome. So the idea was to take the energy all the way through the earth, all the way up through the soul star where nothing 
beautiful, everybody. Beautiful. I'll see you on Sunday. Let's talk Sunday. We'll do the um, cleansing charging of all the stones. Bring a notepad and pen. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget, drop a like. Drop a like on this uh on this video, it really does help us grow the channel here. And that's my intention is to grow it so big that we can get as many people to join together their hearts, their souls together. I truly believe we could make the world a better place. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. If you're in the UK, have a fantastic day. If you are in Australia, it's Tuesday morning here. Some exciting things happening. I'll be with, um, thank you, Vivian. I'll be with uh, Ellis. Oh, my best mate, Ellis, tomorrow on Gems TV. So that's going to be fun. If you haven't got the Chakra Advent calendar for 2020, I think there might be, I heard yesterday there was seven available. I don't know if you haven't got one. Maybe give them a call, grab one. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Big hugs, everybody. I will see you. If I don't see you on TV tomorrow night, I will be seeing you on Sunday. And we'll talk about cleansing, charging, programming. You might want to bring your pendulums with you. And maybe some gemstones. Maybe we can do some Tibetan music. Oh, why don't we do that and we can... Um, we could be giving some power to all our stones at the same time. That might be a nice idea. The sun is shining. Woo! Yeah, Alice. Oh, I love my Alice. I miss her so much. So much. She's my buddy. <laughs> all right. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful sleep. Don't forget, pop your pendulum under your pillow it's uh it's a perfect one to do that it's pink it's nurturing it'd be okay pop that one under your pillow see you next week take care big hugs everyone spread the love